So I am in the laundry room right now because I need to work on a solution to getting our Teslas charged. What I've run into, the rental house that we're in right now, I can't do anything permanent to this house. And I came up with a solution that I think is gonna work out really well. And it's a very cost effective solution. Now, before I show you anything, if you are not an electrician and you're not comfortable with this, please get an expert to do this. I am not a professional and I'm not telling you to do what I'm doing here. That said, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing because I've come up with a solution that's gonna get me better charging. If you are in this situation, there's a few things that you can do. Now, I am fortunate because behind this door is the garage. So right here in the laundry room, I'm standing right in front of the dryer and this wall right here, I'm gonna be able to poke a hole and run a cord through to have an outlet right back here. So let me show you what we're working with and I'll show you what I'm about to do. All right, so as you can see, our dryer's right here and we have a NEMA plug here. And if I zoom in for you, you'll be able to see it's actually a NEMA 1030. And that means it's 240 volts and 30 amps. So this is a really good thing. It's not gonna get you 30 miles an hour, but it will get you more than 20. So like I said, there's the dryer right there, and I'm going to poke a hole in this wall somewhere down here where it's out of the way, kind of hidden. And on the other side here, I'm going to have an outlet right here. And I'll show you which one I'm getting, but then when we park the car, I'll be able to charge it from right here with no problem. As you can see, we've been using this basic wall outlet, 110, and we get about 1% per hour by doing that, which is not ideal, but it's been okay so far. We just usually go and charge. This is a 1430, and this is what that outlet looks like. It's very similar to a 1450, except for you see this angled prong here at the bottom. So that's the difference you can tell by looking at it and what exactly it is. So 30 amps at 240 volts. So the 240 volts is the really important part here. 30 amps is good as well. Now again, I am not a professional. Do not do what I'm about to show you, but if you're interested, this is how I'm going to do it. This is a dryer cord. It is a 1430, as you can see right here. You can get this at the hardware store. I'll also put a link in the description, of course. And then I've also gotten a wall mount for a dryer outlet. Again, 1430, as you can see. So basically, this back plate is going to mount to the wall and we are going to use these to wire it up. So I'm just gonna run this cord over here and poke it through the hole so that these are sticking out into the garage. I'm gonna mount this there, pull those through and wire this up. So I'll show you how to do this step by step. I wanna make a hole in this wall that is as tight as possible for this cable to fit through without a whole bunch of extra space because I want the cord to go through but not have a huge hole. What I have figured out is a 5 eighths of an inch, if you put that on the back side, is just barely bigger than the thickness of this wire. So you're gonna want a 5 eighths inch drill bit and that's where we're going to do this. So once we pull this cover off, there's just one screw that holds it in place. This is what we're looking at on the inside. Now, technically, you want it facing like this because you want this round piece facing on the top. That is how you're supposed to do it, and that's how we're gonna do it here. And I've already popped a hole on the back one because that way the wire's not exposed, it's in the wall, and I don't need to uh, worry about it out here. Otherwise, there's also a cap on the top that can be removed but you do need technically conduit, I need to say that, uh, to do all this. On the inside, I brought a piece of tape around the height I want the hole to be, and I've just kind of drugged that around here to kind of figure out approximately where I want this hole to be. And I've also marked out where the stud is. So now before we begin pushing this through, these uh, little 
ends on these are all gonna be clipped off. So we want a bare wire coming through. So I'm gonna do that now and then I'm gonna poke the wire through this hole. I'm gonna go ahead and start splicing these and there is a template on this actual box here. You'll see right here, it shows you how much you should splice for each of these. So I've already given that a pretty good look. We're also gonna wanna test run these and see how far these need to go because some of these ones on the bottom, the white and the green one are not gonna go that far. So we want these white one's gonna go there, green one's gonna go there. So we'll cut those ones back a little bit while we're doing this. So as you can see, I've got all these wires spliced and the order in which we are gonna wire these up is pretty simple. Green is ground, green is ground, white is neutral, and that is going to go into the silver one. And then these two brass ones are your hot leads. So your red and your black. It's really that simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these set up and tightened down now. All right, and no project would be complete without me slicing my finger. Be careful that it's very sharp. But we are tightened down and we are ready to put the cover back on. So what you're looking at now is the cord on the inside and this is where you wanna be very careful and you're gonna to wanna to clamp this off. This is not to code the way this is set up, which is not my intent, but that's why you should really seek a professional because they can do this the way it's supposed to be done from the very beginning. So anyways, enough of that lecture. So this does need to be secured so that this cable can't get pulled on, but I've got plenty of cable here that I can easily reach uh, that plug right there. So now that the plug is done and installed, here's a recap of how much it costs to do this, which is pretty cheap. So that plug right there was $15, what you're looking at on the wall. That was about 15 bucks and the cable itself was about 20 bucks. So I'm in this for about $35 to do the install that I just did. Now you have to have very close access obviously to your dryer to be able to get away with it like this. And I don't recommend doing this yourself. However, for us, this is gonna work really well. We should get about 20 miles per hour of charge with this setup. And once our adapter, which costs more than all of this combined, arrives from Tesla, we're gonna plug it in and check out what kind of charging speed we get. So hopefully this will hold up over time. I don't anticipate having any major issues. Again, I am not a professional, I am not an electrician. You should seek advice of a professional, but this is one way to do it that I'm doing. And I think that this is gonna work well for us for the next four to six months while our house is being built. So. We're gonna roll with this and this should satisfy our needs, at least for the short term. You can also wire that cord, that 30 amp cord directly into a wall connector, which is how our wall connector is set up. We just used a 1450 instead because I had a 1450 outlet in the garage. So you absolutely can straight wire this to the wall connector if you have one of these as well. So we're just going to use the mobile connector for now and roll with that because at 30 amps, we're only gonna be able to charge at 24 amps anyways. So we wouldn't really gain anything from having the wall connector other than durability. So speed will be the same. So some fantastic news, the 1430 adapter from Tesla did arrive. So I've got it here, but what I wanna do is plug this into the 12 volt, which is what we have been working with from the beginning. So this is what comes with the UMC. So I'm gonna plug this in, be able to see what kind of charge we're getting. Now with a 1450, we would get, I believe eight or nine kilowatt charge rate. And that was about 29 miles per hour of charge. That's pretty good. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in, get our baseline so we can see how well this ended up working. All right, so new house, new construction that we're renting. So shouldn't have any issues, 118 volts. It does go between 118 and 119, so good power. 
one kilowatt charge rate as I discussed. Now if we change this over to miles, you can see this is four miles per hour at one kilowatt. We're getting a little bit north of 1% per hour. So overnight you can get about 10%, which is helpful if you are traveling. So let's go ahead and swap this over to the 1430 and see how much quicker this charges. So I have a 25 foot extension cord and using an extension cord can impact the top charging rate, but this is only 25 foot. So we should be okay. It is going to have potentially some impact, but may not notice it. It's not too long. So let's go ahead and plug this bad guy in. And I did go with one that had a different color, so I'll never forget that this is the 1430 extension cord, because I do have some 1450s as well. Green light, that's always a good sign. The nice thing about this setup and using the Tesla adapter for the UMC, it's automatically switching this to 24 amps. This is a 30 amp line, so you can only run up to 24 amps on that and it does look like it recognizes that voltage is really good just north of 240 probably settle in around 240 so that should be full so this is six kilowatt charge rate which is six times the charging speed of what we just had so if we switch over to miles that's 22 miles an hour that is absolutely doable. Basically going from, what am I at, 28% to 90% would take nine hours and 15 minutes. This is going to be a good temporary solution. So it's now been five months. We've had this hookup for five months and I actually added this shortly after I did the install. This is a switch. What's nice about this, it's not a smart one. It's a very simple switch, but it means you can't mess up. If the dryer is not running, that means there's no power. So you just switch this over to the other setting one and two so it it's nice because it splits that power into two different sources and only one of them can get the power then you don't have to worry about tripping the box all that stuff definitely worth getting this splitter if you're going to go with this setup i hope that this video was helpful for some of you and if it was of course give it a thumbs up if you haven't already of course subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly you can follow us on twitter and instagram at bearded tesla thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time